Casey, on a recent episode of this show, you mentioned something that I had never heard of before called Zuddles. Mm -hmm. And you explained that it was some piece of some productivity uh, software that you were using that had some German word that I don't remember. And it just sort of jogged my memory that we had a conversation on this show uh, a a while ago about the productivity apps that we use. And Mm -hmm. you are maybe America's foremost expert on productivity (laughs) apps. You wrote a newsletter this week about three uh, apps that you are using to become more productive, um, none of which I have used. And so I just wanted to ask you about that today and uh, and see what you're using. Yeah, I mean, on this show, we hold each other to the highest standards of productivity and technology is a big part of that. And so let's dig into it and find out how we're how we're trying to you know get by in this crazy world, Kevin. Yeah. So uh, the first app that you mentioned was something called Capacities. What is yeah. Capacities? So Capacities it falls into this genre of tools that uh, are called personal knowledge management. So it can contain everything from. Uh, you know, a daily journal about what you're doing that day to notes about subjects you're trying to keep track of. And then all sorts of media. You know, you can throw audio in there. You can throw images in there. But honestly, Kevin, I don't even think capacities is really the interesting part because it's particularly how I've been using capacities that has made me feel like I've maybe started to unlock something. How are you using it? So there is this uh, system of organization called Zettelkasten, uh, Z-E-T-T-E-L-K-A-S-T-E-N. And if you want to go look it up, you can read the whole history of it. I'm not, I'm not going to go into it today. Um, but the basic idea is that if you want to get uh, really smart about something, if you want to develop expertise, you need to break down ideas into little atomic units, right? So I might have a little atomic unit called, uh, you know, Google is accelerating the decline of the web, right? That's a thought that I've had. And as I move through the world, I'll, I'll read stories and I'll, I'll, I'll see pieces of information and I'll think, oh, that actually contributes to this idea that I have about Google. And what I used to do in the past about that, Kevin, was nothing. I would save a link into a database and I would just try to remember that. And if I ever wrote about Google, I would think, now, what was that story that I read? What was it? I'm trying to make a change. And the change is, as I get this new information, I'm going to this list of notes that I have, which are called Zettles, and I'm adding that information into the note. And so over time, I'm fleshing these ideas out. I'm taking little notes within the note. I have all the raw materials. Some of these things will turn into columns. Some of these things will just sort of be reference materials for me. Um, Sometimes I might change my mind about something completely and delete one of these notes because I've decided I was wrong about something. But the whole idea is to do my my job in a way that my my knowledge is increasing over time and it is uh like like visible and searchable to me so how often do you take a note in capacities like are you you said that after reading some stories you'll yep. you'll put it in there do you do that after every story that you read no so i try to do it basically on most mornings i'll wake up i'll read the headlines because you know One thing about me is I'm writing three columns a week, and a lot of those columns are just based on stories that I am reading in the press that are giving me ideas, you know, um, sparking uh, thoughts of, I want to do a little bit of my own reporting on that, or I want to contribute some analysis to that. I would say... 80% 80% of the stories that, that I see, you know, I, I'll pick out some to put in a platformer and I'll kind of give them a skim, but then there'll be three or four where I'm like, this is really interesting, right? Like this advances the narrative in some interesting way. That's the kind of story that I want to take and I want to put into a Zettel because I think it's going to be important in the future. And do you find that the Zettel casting system actually makes you more productive? Because it seems like a lot of work to me. <laughs> It does, but I think what it does is grounds me and might be in this really important way, right? So it's like, you know, I've mentioned this on the show before, but I have this note called OpenAI is a Weird Company. And, um, you know, that's not that profound of an observation. We've all sort of seen it over the past year, kind of have a, <laughs> a lot of strange things happen to it. But the thing is, the next time I, I need to write about OpenAI or the next time some bizarre thing happens there... If I didn't have this system, I would be on Google. I would be trying to remember what came after what. Right now, I just have a chronology that's sort of built and ready to go. So the next time I need to step into this world, it's like sort of been pre-built for me. But more important than any of that is I just think that like in journalism in general, we don't spend enough time reckoning with ideas, right? I think like for the most part as journalists, we're trained go out, find out what happened, write down what happened, move on, go break another piece of news. That And by the way, that's like great. And like, I do try to do that. But 
I think if you really want to become an expert, like you sort of have to reckon with whatever like the substance of your beat is. You know, for us, it's like, is AI going to create massive job loss? You know, how biased are AI systems? Uh, will AI create existential risks for humanity? These are just like some of the big debates that you and I have been having on the show for two years. And my fear is before I implemented the system, I don't really know how much smarter I was getting on any of those topics. Mm. I talked about it a lot. I'd read a lot of stories about it. But like, was I really, really grappling with it? So anyway, that's just where I'm trying to push yeah, myself. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the second app that you talked about uh, in your newsletter this week, which is something called Raycast. Yes. Uh, what is Raycast? So Raycast is what they call a launcher app. And now this is available only on the Mac desktop. So I realize that's going to leave a lot of people out and, and annoy some people. I imagine there are going to be some maybe similar apps on Windows that you may want to check out. Um, but the way that Raycast works is you set a hotkey for it. So in my case, it's just like command space. And I type that and then a little window pops up. And if you've ever used a Mac before, um, you've probably seen a spotlight, right? By default, when you type command space on your laptop, a uh, spotlight comes up and you can look for an app and you can look for a file. Raycast is the same, except it can do a lot more stuff. For example, just by typing a few keystrokes, I can rearrange all of the windows uh, on my uh, screen, which is nice if, you know, because I have a really big monitor and I'm constantly rearranging windows. But the most cool thing that I do with it, Kevin, is that this has become my favorite way that I use AI during the day. Say more. So a lot of times during the day, I'll just have a little question that I don't want to bother opening up a new tab for in Google. Maybe I'm watching a YouTube video, for example, and I want to ask a quick question about something somebody said, or I'm writing out my column and I want to like look up the etymology of a word. I'm now able to do that in line with Raycast. I just hit command space, I type in my little query, I hit tab, and it sends it to an AI chatbot, and I get an answer back. Now, I'm going to anticipate the obvious concern here, which is like, wait a minute, like, you know that those chatbots are making mistakes constantly, like, you know, do you really trust them? And what I'll tell you is, I just don't ask any like mission critical questions of these things. But I don't know about you, like most of my questions that I'm asking are just like very low stakes, you no, know, I outsource all of my decisions to an AI chatbot. <laughs> I'm, I'm essentially Victor Miller. Yeah, I mean, I uh, use Spotlight probably once a day or yeah. so, uh, usually for finding some file that I don't know where on my computer it is or which folder it's in. Um, how are you? How often are you using this, and how useful do you feel like it really is compared to Spotlight? I mean, I would say I probably use this more than a dozen times a day easily. It really has become the way that I navigate my computer, essentially, is Raycast. And the thing that I like about it, and where I actually feel like it makes me more productive, is it reduces context switching, right? Like, I don't know about you, but when I open up a new tab on my browser, I'm in the danger zone, right? I might think I'm just Googling a fact, but then Google shows me like three news stories underneath whatever fact I search for, and then I start to look at my other tabs, and I get curious about something and all of a sudden I've like wandered down a rabbit hole. The thing that I love about Raycast is I just hit command space, I look it up and then I move on and I've never even left the tab that I was on and I truly do think that that is reducing the amount of content switching that I'm doing. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, third productivity app, uh, Readwise. Tell me about Readwise. So look, if you're a reporter, you're just constantly having problems with documents, Kevin, right? Like for example, uh, a big ruling drops and it's 300 pages long and you need to get a story up about this as soon as possible. Like, can you read the whole thing? Well, yeah, you could, but it's gonna take you a few hours. Um, so what do I do instead? Well, now I'm just having AI take the first pass at these things. And not only am I doing that, but I'm also saving them in a place where for the rest of time, I'll just be able to quickly revisit these things. Like, I don't know what your PDF management system was before this, but I've recently started using something called Readwise. And it's kind of an all purpose reader app. You can, uh, it has an RSS reader in there, for example. So you can, you know, add in all your favorite blogs and websites and read them all directly in Readwise if you want. You can save articles that you're reading uh, from the web if you want to read them later, uh, which is something else that I that I like to do. But to me, the real like AI power here is, gosh, there are so many PDFs out there and they're so long and they're so hard to read. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not only the court reelings, but like I read a lot of academic papers and I often really struggle to get through them and understand what they're saying. And again, I'll anticipate the objection. Casey, are you really letting, are you really trusting an AI to do your reading for? And the answer is, Ultimately, no, but what I am trusting it to do is to give me the first pass on something, mm. right? Saying, hey, give me the gist of this, right? Or maybe pull a few quotes for me about this. And then once I have a sense of it, then I will dive into the document and I'll actually find the quote and I'll verify with my own eyes that it actually says that. But I have found that this is just a really great 
um, a kind of reading assistant and librarian for me. And so this replaces the the sort of uploading documents to the chatbots because you can also upload documents to ChatGPT, to Claude. Yeah. A lot of the major AI tools now allow you to just throw in a PDF and say, can you summarize this for me? So is, is Readwise a replacement for that feature or does it do a better job or why, why use one instead of the other? So I think that... that um you can totally do that. And I do sometimes still ask like Claude, for example, to read a PDF for me. The thing that I was missing though was like the organization piece, you know, uh, like I, the, for example, you know, there was just like a big Google antitrust ruling. I expect I'm going to want to re refer back to that document in the future. And in the past, what I would always do was I would download it onto my computer and then eventually it would like get moved to the trash and then the trash would empty. And then I would want to refer to the ruling again. Now I'm Googling again. Eventually I said, this is enough. I need to just like put my my PDFs in a place where I will be able to find them again. Again, there are other solutions to this, but I like the idea of having a dedicated reader app that wouldn't just sort of help me read these things, but also help me organize them. Wow, you're so productive with these apps. It makes me wonder why you're not writing five or six columns a week, maybe 10, <laughs> 20. Well, hey, let, we'll check in with me in a year. Maybe I've expanded. But do you actually, so this is my yeah. always my question to you because yeah. you are obsessed with productivity software for as long as I've known you. You're always trying out the latest and greatest note-taking app or the organization tool. And you are very productive, but I'm curious, like, do you feel like you are more productive as a result of using these tools? I think, it, you know, to, to it depends on how you define it, right? Like, do I write more columns this year than I did last year? No. Do I feel like I have more peace of mind and feel less burned out than I did last year? Yes. Um, I don't want to say that all of that is just because I'm using slightly different tools. But ultimately, I am a believer in this Steve Jobsian idea of a computer as a bicycle for the mind, right? Something that helps you get a little bit further, a little bit faster. And that's how I, I feel about this stuff. And do you think these tools are mostly useful for people like us, writers who are, you know, constantly synthesizing, you know, mm -hmm. lots of different stories and ideas and referring back to things that maybe came uh, before? Or do you think other people in other lines of work could use these tools well too? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that they're useful for absolutely everyone, but some other folks I think who might find some of these systems useful would include students, academic researchers. I think if you work in communications, you know, this could be really powerful. But, you know, ultimately, a, a lot of people who, who do knowledge work do want some kind of system to keep track of stuff, to noodle on some ideas. And, you know, again, all I'm trying to say this week is like, well, there's some stuff out there you might want to look at. Well, Kevin, how are you taking notes these days? So, this is an area. And by, where and by I, the way, I, I want to say that I'm, I, I when I when I posted my column this week, somebody on social media said, "Can you please check in with Kevin and see if he is still emailing notes to himself?" <laughs> yes. So this is an area where I do actually have news to report because after our last episode where we talked about this stuff, I got so many people who were like. I would say somewhere between offended and outraged that my method of note taking was emailing myself uh, small notes. Mm -hmm. And you would think that I had confessed to like, you know, torturing animals or something like that because people- I did were... experience physical pain when you said you did this. So I understand why people were upset. So I was so ashamed by this admission and the, the response uh, that I got to it that I did actually start looking into a bunch of different note taking apps. Mm -hmm. And eventually I was sort of talking about this with a friend and he said, dude, just use the Apple Notes app. Mm -hmm. It's so it's gotten so good. And I thought, well, you know, I've I've used Apple Notes. It's not very powerful. And and he was like, no, you, you should try it again. They have added so many features to it. Um, and so I did. And now I'm happy to say that Apple Notes is my de facto app for All a right. lot of things in my life. I am I am fully notes pilled. Well, and so tell me about what kind of notes you're doing with Apple Notes, and, and what is what are you liking about the app? So uh, I like Apple Notes, A, because it is so easy. I never have to, like, log in, fumble for my password. It's right there. I'm an iPhone user. I'm a Mac user. And so it's just, it's there. It's on every device. It's automatically syncing to my iCloud. I never have to worry about, like, losing data or anything. But that's just sort of the basic one, because a as my friend told me, and it and turns out to be true, Apple has done a lot to make Notes a more full featured app you know it used to be useful for mostly for you know jotting little notes Grocery to yourself or, lists. yeah uh ap apologizing on social media <laughs> if you if you were a celebrity who had done something terrible you'd make a note in apple notes and screenshot it and post it to twitter 
but I find it useful for not only keeping uh, sort of my to-do list because you can make little checklists, but also it can do some of the things that you're using uh, capacities for. Like it can link notes. You can have hashtags around ideas. It can create these uh, what are called smart folders where you can have a folder that's just – so I have a folder that's just – uh, how I'm preparing for episodes of the podcast or mm. ideas for columns that I want to write. Mm. It's actually now become my default word processor. Mm. So I, I don't write in Word. I don't write in Google Docs. I write in notes. You know, I tried to put one of your columns into a smart folder and it said it didn't belong there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so it can also do things in the in the sort of newer versions, like it can scan text. So a thing that I would often do when I was reading a book and I came across some passage that I wanted to remember is I would take a little photo of the book mm -hmm. and then it would just sit in my camera roll and I would never look at it again. And, uh, you know, I'd find it while I was cleaning out my, my screenshots folder, uh, you know, years down the road. But what you can do with the, the, uh, the you know, with Notes app is you can actually just scan the page and it will strip out the text and make it searchable. Mm. So you can take a, you know, a, a page from a book and, you know, all you have to do is kind of remember, oh, that had a line in it about, um, you know, about, uh, you know, a robot mm -hmm. or something. And I wanted to remember that you can search your notes app and it'll pull up every instance of robot in all the text that you've read and saved. So I use it for that too. In the new version of, uh, iOS, iOS 18, there's a feature in that's been added to notes that I, I really love. I just started playing around with it because I just got iOS 18, but you can actually do voice memos uh, inside notes. So mm. you can start recording, which is a thing that I do a lot. As you know, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a big dictator. I like to, uh, uh, you know, you like to control populations <laughs> without letting them vote on their own self-determination no other kind of dictation oh. uh, i like to speak aloud to uh to my phone and have it sort of take down uh uh notes uh for me and then refer back to those later so i'm notes pill i think it's a great app I, this is not sponsored content i'm just a big believer in keeping things simple and for me the notes app has given me a little bit more organization than i used to have that that is great to hear you know as much as i love the particular apps that i love like all i want for folks is to like have a system that works for you. I talk to so many people that feel truly oppressed by the glut of like digital content in their life and they're looking for some kind of lifeboat. And I know a lot of people that are using Apple Notes for exactly the same reason. So if it's working for you, that makes me excited. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you one rule of thumb maybe to close out. To, if you want to sort of give yourself an easy test uh, for like how productive is this piece of productivity software and it is just this and it is how much time are you spending in the settings of things and in the metadata? Because if it's a lot, then it's probably not making you more productive. Mm. But if you just open this thing up and you go, you're probably good. And it sounds like that's what Apple Notes is for you. That's what Capacities is for me. Don't spend a lot of time in the settings. You might need to set it up initially, but for the most part, you just want to be you know, inside your app, making the little clicky clacky noise with your keyboard. And if you do that, maybe just maybe you'll find a way to get by. All right, one last thing. We want to do a back to school segment for an upcoming episode about all these new phone bans that are popping up at schools around the country and how they are actually impacting uh, students, teachers on the ground at these schools. So if you are a student who has had to lock up your phone during the day this year, or go to you go to a school that has banned phones, or maybe you're a teacher or an administrator working at a school that's put a phone ban in place, we want to hear from you. If you have a story to tell us, please email us a voice memo to hard fork at nytimes.com and we might include it in our upcoming episode thanks a lot hey that's the end of this clip if you liked what you saw head on over to our page and subscribe and you can get the full podcast we do a show like this almost every week on tech and the future head on over there now and subscribe